All right, we're with Taylor Hawkins of the Foo Fighters. Hi so there. how are you doing and what are you doing at NAMM 2007? I'm doing well and what I'm doing here is I'm doing a little signing for Tama, my, the people who make the drums that I play. You've been playing Tama for a while? Yeah, that's, yeah, like, I would say like six years or something. Better than, what would you start off with? Whatever I could find. Like pots and pans, is that what you started off with? Yeah, uh, and then like a mixture of my neighbor's drum set and the guy that lived ten blocks away and a Sears and Roebuck crash cymbal and you know. Is this uh, something Drums that... are expensive. When you're ten years old, to even think that, you know, now I get all my drums for free and I just call Gene up and I go, hey, I want one of these. And he's like, all right, I'll be there in three weeks. Ah, when you're 10 years old, you know, drums are like, you know. Hard to come by? Yeah, <laughs> and they're like works of art, you know. Yeah. So, so what's going on with the Foo Fighters? What, what are you guys doing these days? We're getting ready to make a new record. That's what I was hoping you'd say. Yeah. Now, you did a double album last time. Right. And uh, what's this one going to be like? Any surprises? I don't know. It's all a surprise to me still because we're really in the early stages. We're just kind of demoing songs and all that kind of stuff. Did you like that last uh, double in your honor album? Like doing a little bit of acoustic, a little bit rocking? Yeah, I liked it. I mean, there was definitely a there was a line down the middle with it, and I think that there won't be that this time around. And it was like an experiment. You know, every time you make a record, it's almost like an experiment. You know, so uh, and it and it worked. I think, I think. Um, but Nia will probably meet somewhere in the middle this time, and then next time, nothing acoustic, and then next time, you know. What do you do in your downtime? Um, I haven't had a lot of downtime, actually. You have other projects, though, yeah, don't you? Yeah, I have other projects. So one of my downtime projects is uh, a little band I have with a couple of my friends called the Coattail Riders. It's a funny little name for... Uh, it's got some really good musicians in that band. Do you record with them or you just play? Yeah, I record with them and, and, and I sing and play drums in that band. And then I have little other various things I do for fun. Like I have another little cover band and we just play little restaurants around my house called uh, Chevy Metal. <laughs> and we do that every once in a while when we get a chance. So, so Foo Fighters have been going strong for quite a while now. Yeah, yeah. Well, how, did, how did Foo Fighters come to be? How did you get mixed up with the, um, Dave Grohl? I, I met Dave um, when I was touring with Alanis Morissette. I would play drums with her when she first came out and got real, you know. I probably saw you play back then. Probably did. Um, I was younger. Probably not quite so rough looking. <laughs> um, but, uh, so, uh, you know, you tour and you do these festivals, especially over in Europe, where you, a, lot, a lot of, you know, kind of mingle with a lot of other bands. So I met Dave through that, and then you know, we kind of, we're friend friendly and we had a good time hanging out then and then I did kind of lost contact with him and then about six months later I found out that their drummer had bailed and I really liked them before I joined you know I really liked the band before I joined so uh, I you know I somehow finagled a way to get a hold of them and said hey you know I'm a drummer now do you like doing those Foo Fighter videos because they're so funny sometimes well, we haven't really done like one of those really goofy, funny ones in a long time, actually. Learn to Fly was hysterical. Yeah, it seems like all our videos the last couple records have been very serious, sort of, in a way. So you uh, like the fun stuff better? They're usually better. I don't know, we made a couple of performance ones that are fun, too. No, I hate making videos, period. It takes forever, and it's really boring. A lot of hurry up and wait. You do a lot of like what I'm doing today, and just sitting in a room for two and a half hours going... <laughs> with nothing to do, so. Right. Yeah. Like I said, what so other genres of music do you like? Do you like the hip-hop stuff? No, not really. Here like and there, but not really. Country? Uh, yeah, but older, you know, and not necessarily straight country. I mean, I, and it's just because I haven't really delved into it that much, really, but, like, I, I, I really like uh, Graham Parsons. So in the more California country, early 70s, troubadour scene stuff, you know, if you know what I mean. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. All right. <laughs> okay, so... Um, I, I like, uh, you know, a little bit of kind of jazzy, fusion-y, whatever you want to call it, 
it's because I like, you know, it's exciting to hear musicians play at that level, you know. Do you, do you have... All day, but, you know. Do you have a word to define your style? No. My drumming style? Yeah. Self-taught. Well, it's gotten you very far. Yeah, it has. I'm very lucky. Really? Self-taught? Yeah. How do you, how do you, you just like, how do you learn that? I don't Drumming's know. Drumming's not easy. Drumming is really essentially just hitting things in time, you know, so you watch people and you listen a lot, you know. I mean, so who are you watching? Being a good musician, ha like three quarters of being a good musician is listening. So who was I watching and listening? Well, my my dearest friend in here, Stuart Copeland, he's one of the people who I really admired growing up. But really a lot of people, you know. I loved, and I loved, I didn't just love drummers, I loved bands, you know. A lot of the early new wave stuff. I was into the English beat and all that stuff, and I was really into, you know. Who do you go see these days? Rock stuff. There's a couple bands I like. There's a band called uh, Secret Machines I really like a lot. They're kind of a newer band. I like the Killers. I like a couple things. I don't love everything, but I like a few things. But the ones you do, you support it. Yeah. So, one last question. It's a brand new year. What's your resolution this year? I don't really do resolutions. Do you do uh, goals? You have a, a new I goal? I always do goals. Goals to have a healthy baby this year. Oh, you're expecting. Uh, yeah, it's early, but yeah. Um, I don't really care. Everybody says it's too early, but fuck it, I don't give a shit. Well, I remember uh, you kind of uh, broke the news about Dave Grohl's baby. Yeah, it was an accident. He got kind of <laughs> mad at me about that. Too. I remember that because I think I even repeated that on the air that you uh, goofed. I blew it. I have a big mouth. <laughs> Don't okay. tell me any Anything secrets. Anything else you want to tell us? <laughs> Don't tell me any secrets. Okay, what, what's, uh, what's going on in the recording studio that we shouldn't know about? Nothing exciting, <laughs> really. It's just music. Where like are you guys it. recording at? We have our own studio okay. down in the valley. And the uh, no, uh, San Fernando Valley. You guys pick a producer already? I think so, but I'm not gonna say it yet until like it's all nailed down in stone, you know. Ah, uh, you getting a little scared? <laughs> well, no, I just you know I... we're we we've decided, and it's who's gonna produce it. But yeah, whatever. It's Gil Norton, I think. <laughs> it's a guy a guy who did the second record, Color and Shape. Okay, so. cool. I've never worked with him, so I'm looking forward to it. Well, I'll let you know right now, Everlong was one, is one of my ringtones. Oh, there you go. <laughs> it reminds me of him. Everlong, I've waited here for you. Oh, there you go. Oh, oh, okay, there you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs>